facts, isn't it? Just to get this out of the way and to make sure I speak about it. United have just come off the back of losing 3-2 away to home to Red Bull Leipzig, which means that we're out of the Champions League. We're out of the Champions League in the, in the group stages. We're not reaching the knockout stages. We're out. And more likely than not, if we keep this manager in place and we keep the current structure we have in place, we're probably not going to get the top four either. Um, and yeah, man, it's just frustrating. It's so frustrating watching my team play football. There's nothing else that needs to be said. It's just a frustration fest. There is nothing about, like, I don't see the end. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, when are we ever going to get good again? I don't know. When are we ever going to be a top side again? I don't know. I really honestly don't know. Part of me thinks to myself, like, you know what? Take off my reactionary glasses and just think, you know, what are the actual issues that, that are in place? Um, who is really to blame? Because, you know, as per usual, when you get knocked out of such a luscious competition, the blame game starts. But let's not look for the easy targets. Let's really think about this properly. And if I'm honest with myself, until we change ownership, until we change how we operate as a football club, we're never going to be a top football club again. We're never going to be there. We might be there and there about because we always tend to have good players in our team. I think we we kind of avoid, um, you know, slipping into um, what slipping into the stasis that Liverpool or Arsenal or Liverpool that did prior to Klopp and Arsenal are currently in because we just have good players. We kind of get away with it, right? We have a pretty decent academy. Um, we seem to bring through a lot of decent players. We seem to always sign a decent player here and there, which kind of tends to paper over the cracks. And with that, you can get away with it in the, in the Premier League, especially if you have like a dud year like this year, right? This year has been a bit of a dud. The top teams haven't really been complain to a level that they should be playing at hence why Tottenham are kind of pulling up a lot of trees and really kind of staking a claim for maybe a late you know maybe a surprise title challenge but when it gets to the Champions League when it gets to those sort of levels of competition you can't really paper over cracks they all get exposed right and what I saw today against Red Bull Leipzig was not only the exposure of our lack of maybe style of play our lack of a system our lack of tactical fluidity, um, our lack of really big game moment clutch players. It was also maybe a real exposure, a real kind of exposing of our lack of structure as, as a football club, right? We're not really put together in a way where we are kind of constructed. No, we're not really put together in a way that you would think that we're trying to be the best club in the world. We're not really put that way. You don't, you don't really get you don't really get the feeling that the Glazers or Ed Woodward or Matt Judge or all these other people sat down with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and had a plan in place where they were thinking, hey, we want to try and win the Champions League. You don't really feel that. You don't really feel they're trying to win the Premier League. They're just trying to do their best in cup competitions and potentially go the distance when it comes to the league. But there's no real oomph. There's no real drive. There's no real um, plan in place. And I think it's been reflected on the pitch. We lost 3-2 against Red Bull Leipzig, which probably isn't a bad result, all things considered, or, you know, well, in isolation. But then when you kind of marry it up with the fact that we lost at home to PSG, and then we dropped points away to Istanbul, right? We lost 3-1 to a pretty crap Istanbul team. We really gave ourselves no possible chance to get out of the group, even though we started the group really well by beating Red Bull Leipzig 5-0 at home and then beating Paris Saint-Germain. So the team has the obviously the capability capability to pull the performances out of the bag. But when it comes down to it, really, overall, are we that surprised that a team full of Maguire's, Lindelof's, Arwen Bissakas and Luke Shaw's couldn't keep out a very potent a Red Bull Leipzig attack, especially with their fullbacks? Are we really surprised that we couldn't maybe... Um, connect the ball from the midfield to the strikers up front because we only had two deep landing playmakers who are not the most mobile i don't have the best passing ranges are we really surprised that maybe all the confusion around paul Pogba's future still three or four or five seasons on is kind of maybe um affecting the team seeing that he's one of the most popular players in the squad are we really surprised no but it still hurts man it still hurts because this game was there for the taking 
Rebel Leipzig, fair enough. They absolutely bossed us for the first half, right? They knocked us about. They stretched us from left to right. Ju um, Julian Nagelsmann did, did his homework. He didn't repeat the same mistakes, same mistakes he did um, when we played them at home, right? And if anything, even if you watch that game at home, it was a 5-0 game, but it wasn't really a 5-0 game. We just took all our chances and they didn't for the most part. But we didn't exactly destroy them with our play. They destroyed us tonight. They destroyed us. They pulled us apart from left to right. They had attacking fullbacks, absolutely exposing our fullbacks who can't defend. They reduced the ability of our defenders to bring the ball out from the back. They stopped basically Matthias and McTominay from carrying the ball out, to the, out from the midfield into maybe someone like a Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes was anonymous. Bruno Fernandes hardly touched the ball in the first half, maybe for the most part. Maybe towards the end of the first half, he had, he had a few good shots on goal. And second half, he kind of kicked on for a bit. But he was quiet by his own standards. Why? Because Red Bull Leipzig completely nullified our attack. They didn't give us any option, any ability to carry the ball through the lines and get them to the players that are really going to hurt them. Which is why most of the time, players like Mason Greenwood had to drop deep you know, skip past two or three players in order to get the ball forward up front. But they weren't allowing us to create any patterns of play because they knew where our danger points were and they knew how to exploit them. They completely tore us apart. If not for a couple of uh, out, you know, not couples, whatever, one um, ruled out goal. It could have been, it could have easily been four or five nil in the first half. Easily. We didn't have a kick in that game. We didn't have a kick. And then suddenly he changes the formation, changes the shape in the second half. And we suddenly kick on, we start attacking now. We start playing a much better brand of football. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to take a lot of the blame for this. It's not all his fault. I still think a lot of those players let down, you know, let the club down in general, right? You, 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 the likes of your Harry Maguire's and your David De Gea shouldn't be letting that third goal go in under no circumstances. You might get blitzed in the first 20 minutes and you can excuse it for not having the shape in place and it being maybe the big stage of nerves. But after that, you should have like an agreement between your sources defenders that you're not going to let anything else go in. You're going to die on that pitch. You're going to give us a, the attackers the best possible option to make sure that we can win. And they didn't do that. That third goal with, from Justin Cliver was embarrassing. Embarrassing at the end. How are you letting that goal go in? It didn't give us any opportunity to score. And I always had a feeling, even at 2-0 down, there was still an option for us. There was still a possibility that we could have a little late rally and score. Two goals in order to get us through to knockout stages. Now, would we have deserved it? Probably not. Would we have probably um, won the Champions League? I doubt it. But again, it's a cup competition. Who knows? Gives us an option to kind of build from that. But he doesn't. And again, this all stems from the selection to begin with. I don't understand how we can play five people. We can have five defenders at the back. Two sitting defenders, right? That's how this is the formation I've got here on the screen. We have five defenders playing. We have Tellez, Luke Shaw, Maguire, Lindelof and wan -Bissaka, and two DMs in Matisha McTominay and we still conceded two goals in 25 minutes. Please, someone tell me what the hell are these guys doing in training? Now, if you want to tell me, oh, it's not Solskjaer's fault because it's not him's fault to let the first goal go in for after one minute. Okay, fair enough. Sometimes you can get caught cold, right? It's football. This shit happens. But the second goal, it was a carbon copy of the first just on the other flank why and then we considered the third but it got ruled out for an offside right i think or something so we could have been three goals down before half time which definitely would have been curtains because we would have came out quickly on the second half they would have scored again on the counter and then the game would have been over before one how is that possible how is that possible it has to be stuff to do with training because there's definitely a way, I definitely agree with some people have said, where there's probably not enough width in the midfield to protect the back line, right? They're probably too exposed. I get that. Because, you know, if the ball comes out here to Antelez and somehow um, Luke Shaw gets drawn in in the middle, uh, Matic has to come out as well, so it leaves loads of gaps in the midfield. I get it. I understand. But there's a way to play with five at the back that that you kind of allow yourself to be as compact as possible so that when you do break, you can then break with speed and power and you have your options up front in order to get the ball further up the pitch. There is a way to do it, but we don't seem to be able to do that. And I don't know why. If this is one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's preferred formations to fall back on away from home in Europe, we should have a way of playing this way in an efficient way that gets the best out of the players we have available. Luke Shaw supposedly is meant to be the best um, his best position is meant to be, you know, left of a back three, and he was terrible. But again, why was he picked? He's been injured for what a good 
two months maybe or maybe one month or six weeks or something and he's coming off, off the cold playing an away game in a champions league against a team that has very quick and mobile players who interchange positions it's probably the worst game for him and he had an absolute shocker so did Aaron Wan-Bissaka and so did maybe our entire backline maybe to exception of Alex Tellers who probably put in a few good set piece balls was offering a bit of a threat and whip from the left hand side and then guess what half time he hooks Tellers makes sense of that brings on Van Der Beek leaves on Luke Shaw who then ends up getting injured he has to bring on Brandon Williams later on I'm just like I don't know man and then who came on after that? Aaron Wan-Bissak, um, Axel Twanzebi, and Timothy Fosu Mensah. Are you insane? And we're trying to win the game. Pogba came on, of course, and you know did what Pogba does and had a pretty decent game. So when you look at the numbers, right? He contributed, of course, he scored the goal to make it 3-1. And he made some very incisive passes inside the midfield. But we know this already. We know this. We know much, how much of a good player he is. This is not a surprise for us. Of course, the conditions aren't necessarily helpful. He obviously wants to leave. He doesn't want to be at a club anymore. And the club are maybe holding him to ransom because they haven't got the fee that they want. And they don't want to get embarrassed by ha having him let go, by basically allowing him to be uh to be sold for a cut price fee and then for him to pull up trees and become a ballon d'or winner in the next club i know what the club are like right they're, they're, they're a bit small-minded that way but if that's the case then i don't know sort it out because we know what his attributes and his skills are and what we've seen so far and again in my opinion is we've seen an inability for our club to recognize what the actual issue is the actual issue that's happening here, I think in general, is that we don't have a structure and a system in place that's going to allow the club to be great again. Where is our sporting director? Why don't we have somebody that's acting as a buffer between some of our high profile players and maybe members of the media? Why is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer before a big game having to answer questions about Paul Pogba's future at the club? Why is Mina Varela talking out loud about what is going on with his client at the club? Because we don't have a sport director that he can maybe liaise with in terms of understanding where he sits with the club, where the contract negotiations are going to be, is he going to get sold? We need somebody in there just to kind of steer that ship. But it feels like United are reluctant to sign a sporting director because they don't want to give the power to somebody else or because they don't want to hold themselves accountable to that person that's going to do that job. Because if you come in cold and you're somebody that's fresh and you don't really, you're not familiar with the United hierarchy, you're going to have your KPIs in place. You're going to have some goals in place that you want to achieve. You're going to have some markers. You're going to have some targets that you want to go after. And the moment the club failed to get those, it's going to be very evident and very clear who the problem is. And they don't want that. They want this amb ambiguity, this confusion, this vagueness that we have at the moment. Who's signing the players? Is it is it is it Ed Woodward? Is it Matt Judge? Is it Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? No one really, really knows. So they kind of feed off of that. That's what it kind of feels like. They don't want accountability. They don't want someone who's going to be in there doing that job, you know, um, for a set period of time with targets in mind, with a great CV, with contacts everywhere, because the word will get out that we are not a serious football club and they don't want people to know that. That's that's the only reason I can think. Because if you've got anything on social again, who's obviously an inexperienced manager at this level, even though he's been managing for 10 years, he's been at the job, what, 40 more games than... Um, Julian Nagelsmann at Red Bull Leipzig, right? And they play way better football than us. They probably have a far higher ceiling than us at the moment, even though we have quote unquote better players on, on paper. But that's for all the Oli inners to probably argue about later. But if that's the case, if your Oli Gunn Solskjaer is your guy and he's clearly not experienced at this high level, he's got an inexperienced coaching staff with the exception of maybe, um, what's his name? Mike Phelan. Why not get someone in above him to help him? To be able to guide where we're going next to be able to add some structure suggest them to bounce our ideas off of why is he left on his own to try and manage this squad that's essentially failed with you know four or five other managers prior and expected to make you know magic out of nothing like why is this a thing and then now what we're going to sell Paul Pogba we're going to put all our hopes on Bruno Fernandes and the same thing is going to happen that happened to Paul Pogba at, at United he's going to be left with Matic and McTominay to feed him the ball which is not good enough. The same way Pogba was expected to be a Ballon d'Or winner playing alongside McTominay, Andres Pereira, right? Or maybe at that time, an inconsistent Fred. And then we're still going to be comparing at that time then. But somebody like a Bruno Fernandes is not going to tolerate it maybe it's the same way that Pogba did because he's essentially, you know, he's at his boyhood club. What are we doing as a football team? Like, really, what are we doing?
I don't understand it, man. It's just none of it makes sense. It really doesn't. And it's frustrating to watch. It gets me so angry. But sometimes I just think to myself, you know what? Relax because we're not really going to go anywhere with this current ownership. We never are going to go anywhere. We're never going to be the team that I grew up on. We're never going to be winning league titles and, you know, European Cups to the level that we were prior or domestic um, trophies even. That's not going to happen. A serious club cannot function with the Glazers in charge and with somebody like Ed Woodward steering the ship. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. We've seen it. We've seen this experiment run, you know, what's it, seven years post Sir Alex Ferguson? And so far, we've had really nothing to show for it. A couple of cups here and there, Europa League win, and some quasi high finishes in the Premier League, which on paper, if you look at how we finished those leagues in the Premier League, they weren't that impressive. We haven't done anything. Nothing has really changed, but we keep thinking that our new managers can come in and change stuff. Now, that's not to say that Oligon Solskjaer shouldn't be A9. I don't think he's good enough for the club. I think he's a terrible coach. I think he's average at best. He'll probably struggle to get another job in the Premier League. So he has to go. But let's not confuse and think that if we get Pochettino in, that suddenly we're going to be title contenders. That's not going to happen. We need a clean sweep. If Solskjaer goes, so must Ed Woodward, so must Matt Judge. And for the most part, the, the Glazers should look to sell the club and get another ownership in place because we're not going to be successful under their stewardship. It's just not going to happen. They don't want to spend money. They're okay with us getting fourth. And the teams around us are getting better. That's not a recipe for us being successful again. So if that's the case, sell up the club, give somebody else that can do it and get football and people in so we can get back to being a proper football club. Because at this point, it's just we're just playing game. We're just wasting time. We really are just wasting time. Because even Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I think, let's say you back him and you think he's a good manager. Okay, cool. He needs players. He's clearly shown you if you give him players, he can do pretty well. Right, so far his transfers have been pretty decent, regardless of who you think he bought or not. Most of his transfers have been all right. Everyone's been basically a five to seven out of ten, which is pretty decent for a hit rate in terms of transfers, with exception of maybe Daniel James, who's really kind of you know suffered this season. But for the most part, everyone's done pretty well signing wise. He's basically proven if you give him his players, he will possibly get you decent finishes. But he requires an open checkbook. He doesn't. He doesn't look like he's a manager that can coach a side. He can coach, you know, uh, semi-decent players into better players. He just needs ready-made players, fit them in the formation, give them the good vibes FC, vi give them the good, good vibes FC message and send them out there and hope that they win. If that's the case, then give him the players that he needs. And if he can't get the players that he needs, get in the manager who can work under a constricted budget, who can work under an ownership that doesn't really want to do great things and let them try and kind of, you know, make a diamond out of shit. Like, do that. But at this moment in time, they're all selling us this dream that we're trying to be united of old and it's a culture reset. It's a waste of time. We're not obviously doing anything serious. We don't want to be a serious football club. This is all a joke. So now we're out. We're now supposedly in the Europa League um, unless what? Uh, unless a crazy thing happens and somehow Istanbul managed to beat PSG by a certain goal amount and we might be in Champions But again, who wants to go through your Champions League on that record after losing, what, three games back to back? And then we suddenly sneak in because another team beat somebody else. It's just like, that's not a recipe for um, success in the next in the next rounds. So I'd rather be out. We're in a Europa League now. Like, it's a waste of competition. I don't give a shit about our Europa League. Um, we've won it already. Cool. We move on. Um, the games are on the Thursday. We're going to play on the weekend on a Saturday. It's just a complete shit show of a situation. I'd rather us just play our youth team players, second team players, just get knocked out as soon as possible and then just restart. My ideal solution would obviously be, a scenario would be that Solskjaer decides to walk. You know, he decides to pack up his bags and give the keys to somebody else to the club and allow them to maybe have a chance to maybe get a couple of games under their belt um, before the new year and obviously have the ability to then sign some players in January. But that probably is going to happen. The club are going to wait until the very last minute until we can't secure top four football um, and then they're going to pull the trigger and we're going to have the same repeat process again and again because I just don't believe one person is going to save us. I think we need a root and branch, do a root stem and branch analysis. We need to take, pull everything out. We need to tear it all down and start again. And until we do that, we're never going to be a serious football club. That's just my opinion. Oh, it's annoying, man. It's so, 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 so annoying honestly but yeah what can you do what can you do